Hi, and welcome to Sustainably Smart Talks, where cutting edge meets a sustainable future. I'm your host, AJ Maharapa, and today I'm joined by my guest, Isaiah Nasuma, who works in human robot collaboration. Well, Isaiah, can you tell the viewers your a- academic background, your journey, and yeah. your experience? Yeah, sure. Uh, as AJ said, I'm Isaiah Nasuma. Uh, my background is was in mecha- is in mechatronic engineering. Well, that's what I did for my bachelor's, and then I moved on to do engineering management uh, for my master's. And now, currently, I'm looking at how to influence people and technically their behavior within the manufacturing environment, especially as they interact with cobots that are with there in. Yes, cobots. Cobots. What are cobots? Um, that's a technical term. Can you can you explain that in more accessible? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, cobots are just robots that people are able to interact with and don't need to be held in cages. So think of a robotic arm, um, the ones that manufacture vehicles. You know those big machines. Uh, but then, uh, because of safety reasons, how fast they move, and uh, a few other dynamics, you can't technically work close to them. Okay. But cobots are the ones that have been made easy for humans to work close to. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I believe the technical term is nudging dynamics. Yes, it is. Can you explain a little bit that to the viewers what nudging dynamics is in human robot collaboration? So I'll break down those two words in nudging, then dynamics. So nudging is kind of slightly influencing someone's behavior. Uh, so that they car- carry out a certain goal that you have for them. And that's from behavioral sciences where you can, uh, from the work of Thaler and many others who have been able to see different ways of nudging people. So the nudging dynamics comes in is in manufacturing is where you look at what are the aspects that we can use to nudge humans okay. and do they need to be nudged? And if so, okay, they need to be nudged. Let's see what we can work with. Okay. Well, Isaiah, explain how robots are already being integrated into our uh, manufacturing environments. Oh, there are very many ways. I think uh, one of the most or the simplest way of putting it, uh, think of a, one of the BMW manufacturing companies where they use 80% of the robots just to do the work. So you can imagine... A car is being manufactured on the manufacturing plant from start to almost finish. Robots are handling almost everything. That's interesting. And then you think of Amazon, uh, where they're using automated guided vehicles to be able to uh, deliver things and place things, carry things. And those are robots and those are cobots that uh, could be used. Uh, One of the interesting bit about cobots right now in the manufacturing space is that most companies are now realizing that they would better have cobots than robots themselves. One, because of the space. So with a robot, a normal robot that uh, needs a cage and a a physical barrier to prevent human beings from getting close to Mm -hmm. them, that means you need way much more space to be able to put the robot. But if you have a cobot, you have less space because people can interact, people can move there, and they've been made smart to be able to uh, yeah, enhance that interaction. Yes, indeed. You said they're being used 80% in BMW. How, as well, are they enhancing productivity and precision? Yes. Uh, so think of the manual repetitive tasks that humans were supposed to be doing. Yes, well, indeed. Well, that's, those are the jobs that the robots are currently doing the manual repetitive tasks but then the humans are now there to be able to do the quality quality reliant uh, tasks that are needed Uh, one of the things that makes it interesting for especially for automotive companies is the fact that uh, when you have humans interacting or stopping or getting into the production process just to check something if you have the traditional robot that needs a cage that's a long procedure you have stopped a whole production line just to check what the problem is this one you just stop a single robot or a few a few robots and you're able to see what the problem is adjust and continue so what are the main advantages of cobots in manufacturing uh, one of the major advantages, uh, especially the ones that usually assist humans with carrying things, is the fact that agronomically, humans have people have been able to safely work uh, 
well think of uh, some of the countries where people are still carrying equipment with their backs people are still carrying heavy equipment ah, with their yes, hands indeed. and cobots are now doing that work for them uh, they're like we need to place something somewhere okay i'll take this cobot go and use it to pick up something and place it at the appropriate place so that's easily one of the advantages the next advantage that you would have as, as i said is the space factor so that you have more robots within a small a small space producing more things and just like that you're able to uh increase your productivity in a sense yes indeed um just a little bit about ai safety now and ethical consideration human robotic collaboration can you delve into the risk of ai powered robots in a manufacturing setting well uh ai powered robots well essentially would be would mean that we have made the robots quite self aware in what they're doing and hopefully work safely within with human beings within that shared space but obviously errors and problems can happen for example a robot can hit a human without sensing that the human was there if there was an error in the body tracking for the human then definitely it didn't see that human there or if there is an error with the proximity sensors then definitely uh, a person can be hit or a collision can happen and that's of definitely a huge problem but most of uh the manufacturing companies have made sure that the safety compliance is well adhered to adhered to okay. uh, just because of the if implications of not having a such a safe system are um, way worse than uh investing into making sure that the system is safe yes indeed so the manufacturers the industry people making sure this is safe but uh what are the potential risk of a uh, adversarial manipulation and manufacture robots well uh it's interesting that you have said adversarial uh, manipulation manipulation uh one of the major safety factors especially just generally with automotive uh, with automation before we get into robotics uh was previously when Siemens had their programmable logic controllers they put a lot into making sure that the programmable logic controllers just work and then uh soon or later they realized oh wow we have done a lot to make these programmable logic controllers work but we have not done al- enough to be able to secure these controllers so that w- essentially what that meant is a whole production line could potentially be switched off just by someone hacking into the programmable logic controllers yes, so with the robots is something similar uh since people these days use ai to be able to hack into systems because an ai algorithm can be able to see potentially way more uh ways of penetrating into a system than a person would definitely be able to uh but that has to be uh taken care of in a sense and a lot of companies uh for example Kaspersky and a few other companies are making sure that oh we provide this security in terms of uh adversarial maneuvers and manipulations that uh might come in the way. But definitely I agree with that definitely I can see that but but there is viability for this so as I explore the potential for robots to not only assist workers but also to enhance human capabilities uh, one of the important things that uh, i usually highlight every time when we talk about robots and cobots one of the uh, essential things is that humans have to realize they have to upskill themselves if you're going to work with a robot your set of skills would have to exponentially increase So if you're used to doing manual jobs once a robot has been introduced you have to get used to using the human uh, machine interface that the robot has come with yes, you have to get used to using or at least try and get interested in looking at how to program the robot itself how to move it around part of the work that a lot of colleges are now doing is integrating that into the normal curriculum for students so that they know this is coming this is part of our world let's get comfortable with it you know and in in essence being able to do that makes people's skills increase exponentially if someone is interested of course one of the most uh important skills uh with robotics i would say uh 
would be looking at ROS. ROS is a simple framework, uh, well, not simple uh, essentially, but an easy framework to be able to start learning from and program even small robots, uh, like a slam, uh, a slam robot or a small uh, Lego robots that are usually sold. Uh, those are some of the ways you can be able to start and just by that you can be able to increase your skill set It's indeed indeed um, slam is a bit of a technical term. It's us uh, simultaneous simultaneous localization and mapping. So this is usually used for robots to um, Venture into unknown maps and uh, save the maps so people have so the robots have a way of recognizing them for their automated tasks but you touched a little bit about it, that people have to improve their skill set once the robots are there. But how do the robots provide any feedback that encourages humans to trust them more? Uh, it's interesting you've asked that question. Trust is one of the important issues when you're dealing with robots. Uh, my work looks at how people are comfortable working around robots and what people, how people react to errors that robots make. So think of a robot that's supposed to pick and place something at a particular point and it doesn't place it at that particular point or drops it somewhere. Then you'd be like, oh, I don't want to work with this robot because I cannot trust that it would do what exactly what it has been programmed to do or what it is required to do. Uh, so that has to be earned slowly. I wouldn't say that is something from what I'm doing. I'm realizing that is not something that ye, it's not a, an easy solution to come up with because people have to be comfortable around that robot. It's people amazing. have to be nudged. And part of my work is nudging people to be comfortable within that space. So giving them reassurance that, oh, this error has occurred. We have identified that the error has occurred, but we have resolved the error and we should not expect the error to happen again things like that would give someone confidence they get out of there feeling oh wow yeah i'm now st still comfortable around this robot and those who did not receive such nudges would be like no i still don't trust this robot yes indeed well isaiah well share a vision to me of the future of collab collaborative robots please uh Collaborative, I, I feel like collaborative robots would be more complex. Right now, most of what, how people interact with collaborative robots is by actually being within the system, within okay. the manufacturing plant, and being able to make things or control things uh, with the robot itself. However, think of the future where someone is sitting at in their room wearing augmented, well, reality glasses or virtual reality glasses whichever that's useful for them and being able to do things with a robot that is in the manufacturing plants so you have a humanoid that the person is controlling by yes, his indeed. movements and the cobot itself that the person is working with i think that's an interesting place that we need to get to uh, and would be a really interesting place. Uh, part, I would say, a snippet of that has already been, has already been seen by uh, the robot docs, you know, the Boston Dynamic ones yes, that have been implemented in different companies yes, just to do the quality checks and things like that. So instead of a company employing or using two million or three million pounds to be able to put sensors within their yes, their old plant, they just use one robot, and that does all the work that they need and people are now comfortable working around those robots because they have seen them more frequently and that's probably what i see yes, in indeed. well this podcast is about sustainability well isaiah could you explain some of the environmental and sustainability aspects of robotic systems and manufacturing how can ai and robotics help reduce the environmental footprint of industrial processes yeah one of the major things that robot cobots especially cobots uh, and my nudging systems uh, is designed to do is to be able to increase pro productivity and performance by increasing productivity and performance you're able to reduce wastage in different areas it reduce errors too is one of the other aspects that i'm looking at can we be able to reduce errors within the system and safety so uh my master's it's interesting that my master's was uh, looking at my uh, final work was looking at how humans can be able to improve sustainably 
themselves sustainably within the workplace. And one of the first important things is looking at their safety. Yes, so you indeed. can't say that you we're sustainably uh, making the environment better, but you're not looking at how it affects humans themselves okay so focusing on humans and saying okay can we be able to nudge humans to feel more comfortable that's more important than can we be able to reduce production rates by yes, or increase production rates by 10 percent or 15 percent if people have feel that they are taken care of way better then they will produce more and that they'd be able to they'd be more encouraged to do their work so my sustainability comes from uh, the fact that we have to look at humans even as we are looking at sustainability and not just the people the things that people consume yes yeah. indeed so just to close off as we wrap up uh, isaiah so what advice do you have for manufacturers workers and policy makers as we move towards greater integration of robots in the workplace I would say one of the most important thing is uh, think human, think human, and that's 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 literally what people should be doing. Think about the humans that you're working with. Uh, the whole the whole point of bringing cobots into the manufacturing systems was, oh, let's think about the humans. Either you're replacing people, so let's not replace the jobs. Let's bring cobots so that we'd be able to have these humans work together with the cobots and not just that now my work which looks at nudging is have we thought about the human how comfortable they are and can we be able to improve their work life within the manufacturing system and that's the whole point of it so mm -hmm. i'd say think human if people can be able to do that they'll mm -hmm. make the world the world way better well, people, if you have questions about um, how robots are going to be integrated, as I can provide insights on how the public can become more involved or informed about the ethical and safety consideration of robots in everyday life, as I's contact details are. Oh uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, which will be uh, uh, in the YouTube video uh, or whichever platform that you see it in. Uh, and yes, I'd be able to interact with you and answer some of your questions, if not all of them. Well, thank you again for listening to another episode of Sustainably Smart Talks. Uh, please remember to subscribe, follow, and share the podcast, especially if you're interested in the topics related to technology, sustainability, and our future work. Well, thank you, Isaiah, for your time. Thank you, AJ. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. Cut! Cut! I think we lost that camera, but you know what I'm gonna do? We did. We have we, we have the beginning part. Yeah. We have this part. So every time we talk uh, about this, we can say, <laughs> well, this is get it coming. <laughs> get it as, as saved yeah, us. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. My brother has saved us, though. So. Yeah.